Alrighty guys, a very warm welcome to the video. Today we're talking about Sam Laidlow's bike ride from Challenge Roth, which was held on the weekend, just last weekend, and some very impressive times. A few guys going under the 7.30, or at least around the 7.30, I should say. The winner, certainly, Magnus Ditlev, under 7.30. New course record as well, beating uh, Jan Fredino's previous course record. So... The reason why I'm drawing attention to Sam's ride is really just because he is the only one who has uploaded the data for, or at least his file from Challenge Roth and included all of the metrics. So full transparency with regard to heart rate data, um, power data, etc. So this is why it's quite interesting and how we can really get a good, I guess, overview of what it takes to ride these times and also just highlight the fact that bike technology has come a very long way and these power figures while extremely impressive certainly aren't anything that hasn't been done before but nevertheless sam is an incredibly strong bike rider and these power numbers are very very impressive i'm not taking anything away from that to do this uh works out to be about 4.2 watts per kilo over the course of pretty almost four hours insanely impressive however it just highlights that the aerodynamics, the, uh, I guess, the the technology in the bikes has come a long way. Let's just put it that much. So let's have a look at Sam's ride. He has titled it Proper Ride. Before we do so, I should say um, Sam came off the bike in second position behind Mad Magnus Ditlev, or pretty much equal first with him. You know, those two guys came into transition together. Sam ran out of transition first. He was leading the run for a bit and then really kind of blew up. However... Even if we go and have a look at his run, it you know it, it was not in any way a horrible performance. He still went under three hours, albeit you know the course is a little bit short. However, uh, yeah, he definitely had some issues with cramping and fell out of the podium spots pretty quickly thereafter once he started to cramp up. So, one hundred and seventy six point two five kilometers, moving time of three hours fifty five oh eight. Now, the official time for Sam was somewhere in the three fifty sevens. So even with that, maybe we could call the ride, I'm not sure, a kilometre, maybe a little bit more short. However, you know, even if it was to be a 480 spat, like spot on, uh, you know, accurate distance, 45 kilometres an hour nonetheless. So an incredible ride. So 355 elevation gain of 1,695 metres. This certainly isn't a lot over this uh, distance, however... It is a lot for an Ironman course, and it certainly highlights that it was certainly up and down. Challenge Roth is by no means a flat course. Um, weighted, so that's not so much, that's just like a Strava metric, but if we look at some of these other metrics, we have his weight being 76 kilograms, his FTP being 400 watts, and this is something which he has input himself. Uh, so whether or not that's true, we're not sure. However, it probably likely is, given that he averaged down here an average power of 317 watts for this entire duration, which is incredible. Average cadence, 86. And this varies a little bit when we go into the analysis. I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, but speed, 45 kilometers an hour. Heart rate, 151 beats per minute. Power, like we mentioned. Calories burned, 4,456. Average temperature of 20 degrees Celsius for the day uh, or around about. I'm not sure if that's an average or just when it started. Uh, and then obviously his elapsed time here. So max power of 649 watts, max speed of 79.6 kilometers an hour going down the hill. Uh, so we can have a look at a little bit more in detail. He's got some KOMs there. And this is the course where it was two laps. Essentially, we had this one bigger climb going from an elevation of 113-ish, you know, sorry, 400 around 400 meters above sea level up to a peak here of about, you know, 560 odd. So 150, 160 meter climb in elevation gain. So quite significant. And then a pretty quick descent coming down here. But obviously this climb is just, you know, it, it's not the steepest of climbs. However, it certainly is a climb nonetheless and up and down all day. So two laps of this course, and we'll have a look at a bit more in-depth analysis of his actual data. So we can go down here and really kind of contrast the course. And this is where I think it's important and where a lot of people can learn a lot from is that we certainly have this or 
not we, but there is certainly a bit of a misconception that regardless of the course, you want to try and hold a steady power throughout your entire ride. I think what's a better approach is to have an overall average power in mind in a range of, and then, you know, try and average that over the ride minus 10 plus 10%. However, what you can see with, especially with Sam's ride, and what I've done here is um, I've smoothed this out for one minute average. So anything we see here is a one minute average. Um, and therefore, for example, if we go here to the power, at any point, this is a one minute average over that time. So 329 watts, a little spike here, 399 watts average for that minute. So what you can see is if we bring it all into screen and we have a look at the, just having a look here at the purple line. So this is the power and this is the course elevation. So you can see here, when we start going up this climb, he is pushing up around the 400 watts, uh, particularly when it's at its most steep. You can see on the far right over here, you can see the gradient. So pushing 421 watts over this minute and the gradient's 9.5%. As it flattens off, he's pushing a little bit less, but he's still pushing above 350, close to 400 at times over those minutes. And then on the descent, he's really just kind of I guess he's pushing a little bit still 200, but particularly on this second descent, you know, he's pushing down here 130, 110, 82, not a lot of power down the hill. And this is where we can really make up a lot of time and use, I guess, saving watts to our advantage, whereby we're going harder up the hill because we've got less air resistance. And therefore, the less air resistance you're pushing against, the more your power is generating the speed. When you're going faster, you have a lot more air resistance and therefore when you have that greater level of air resistance, it's not so much pure power that's pushing the speed, it's power plus how aerodynamic and how fast you can cut through that air resistance. So focusing on aerodynamics when you're going quick, i.e. down a hill and, and a little bit less on power, even using it as an opportunity to back off a bit, and then focusing more on absolute power up the hills and less so on aerodynamics because you're not fighting that wind resistance as much and more power is, being, uh, is contributing towards that speed component. And this is where it's really important to kind of justify or wrap your head around um, exactly why this matters because what he's done, and we can see here on down here, we can see he's averaged 318 watts. And this is 4.2 watts a kilo, incredibly, incredibly strong. But he's averaged 318 watts. And there has been Ironmans in which people of a similar weight have averaged higher than, than you know, 320, 325, 330 watts, which is pretty incredible but have pushed more power than this however not gone as fast and obviously it's on the day obviously it, you know with wind resistance the road surface everything else um, but aerodynamics come into a big part of it the course comes into a big part of it as well you know if it's dead flat it's going to be quicker than if it's hilly but of course what we can really take away from this is say for example sam had an average i want to average between 300 and 320 watts for this ride certainly done that but it hasn't been an equal distribution of power throughout the whole ride it's been using power specifically to maintain speed over the course um you know all these little rises he's pushing up and all of them all of these descents he's pushing a lot less power than his average down the hill so i think that's a key point to take away from us and yeah i do encourage everyone to go and have a look at this and go through it themselves because you know, we, we, we can talk about all of this stuff but when you actually see it at this level. And I think it's great that athletes can be transparent now and really display this to the public. When you see it at this level, you realize just how important using power to, to generate speed to your advantage is as opposed to just going out and trying to average an equal amount of power throughout a whole ride. So, um, and you know, speeds up and down. So, if we have a look at his heart rate, 151 beats a minute, um, a max of 167, so not too much spiking there. Obviously, when he's putting out more power, he's pushing a lot harder, using the sense to get some recovery in, particularly on the second descent, you know, really dropping the heart rate down, dropping the power right down. But look at his speed here, 55 kilometers an hour. This is where doing an extra 200 watts may add, you know, not all that much difference towards his speed. Um, Doing an extra 100 watts might give him another five kilometers an hour, whereas doing another, or not even, whereas doing an extra 100 watts on the climb may be really significant with how much actual 
time you're going to save over the course. So cadence 83, I think that's pretty good. Mostly, I think, you know, you'd want to try and average anywhere from 80 to 85. Uh, 80 at a minimum. But if you drop below 80, I feel like that's getting a little bit slow. Everyone's unique. Everyone's individual. Some guys I, I've seen average 90 uh, or at least, excuse me, at least high 80s. However, I think this is really individual and, and you've really got to figure out what works for you and not worry too much about the cadence as long as you're not cranking out a, a too big a gear the whole time, if you know what I mean. So if, you got, if you're averaging under 80, I'd say you're probably pushing a too big a gear and can be taxing the muscles too much, not using the aerobic system enough. But I think 80 to 85 over the course of a 180 kilometer Ironman is pretty reasonable. And temperature, average temperature of 20, max of 25 as they're getting onto the run. So yeah, I, I think like in general, this really just shows how peak powers, you know, here we have 10 minutes averaging 380 watts. And if you are going to say, I want to try and average 300 to 320, and but, but in that I'm going to do it an effort for 10 minutes at 380 watts, you, you know, it doesn't make much sense. However, you need to race the course, you need to race the race. He was riding with Magnus Ditlev. If Ditlev was putting in a surge, is he just going to let him go or is he going to race the race and stay with him? So... You're going to have spikes in your power. You're going to have times where you can recover in an Ironman. I think for the upcoming World Championships, this is going to be even more important. Is this really, or this idea of using however many watts you're aiming to average almost as like a reservoir of watts. Say like I, this, I have 300 watts, or if you're an age group athlete, you may have 200 watts, or depending on your level of fitness, say I've got 200 watts for 180 Ks. How can I go the fastest I possibly can with those 200 watts? as opposed to, I'm just going to try and average that the whole time. You know, there might be times where you're doing 300 and there might be times where you're doing 50. But all in all, it's the average power that is reflective of your overall work output. And if you do go a little bit above or push towards that red line, don't stress too much because often yeah, over the course of a loop circuit, you'll be going a lot faster and recover at certain times thereafter. So yeah, really, really... Uh, interesting and even for an hour 342 three hours average at 326 watts yeah sam's in some good form obviously not the result he was hoping for because he did have that issue on the run however uh yeah i think all in all we can agree that this is very impressive uh and sam is looking good particularly ahead of nice which is going to come around sooner than we all um are probably expecting uh first off with the women in kona and then in nice so hopefully you guys enjoyed that bit of a recap of the data uh, i think it's very interesting like i said to break it all down and have a look what the pros are actually doing and not just consider like the averages but what they're doing during the ride so go ahead and check it out for yourselves hope everyone's keeping well staying safe training hard and i'll see everyone in the next video thank you